These were Dennis McGrory's injuries, photographed by police hours after Jacqueline Montgomery's rape and murder. It was evidence of her fighting for her life, said the prosecution. No, said McGrory, he claimed he'd been beaten up by four men. In 1976, he was cleared of murdering Jacqueline. She was 15, his partner's niece. An old Bailey judge ruled there wasn't enough evidence and threw out the case. But nearly 50 years on, advances in forensic science prompted a new police investigation. A swab from Jacqueline's body was retested and showed allegedly a billion to one match to McGrory's DNA. The Director of Public Prosecutions ordered a rare second trial of a man declared innocent at his first. A circumstantial case suggesting that McGrory had been at the scene of this murder became a compelling scientific case when DNA linked him to the body of Jacqueline Montgomery. That's what made the big difference here. Jacqueline lived with her parents in North London, a rundown area that's been gentrified since. Police say McGrory turned up looking for his estranged partner, Josie. She deserted him. Jacqueline let him in. Jacqueline's body was found by her father, Robert, when he got back here at two o'clock in the morning. She'd been stabbed, beaten around the head and strangled. The state of the room showed there'd been a struggle. Pages of Jacqueline's diary gave a sad insight into her teenage life, being dumped by a boyfriend, her mum leaving home, her aunt Josie leaving Dennis McGrory and being given police protection. When he was arrested, McGrory had on him a page ripped from Jacqueline's diary. That evidence, too, was given to the new jury. What bears on my mind and the minds of the police and the CPS in bringing justice in this case is Jacqueline Montgomery, those who mourn her, those who loved and knew her, for whom 50 years may seem a long period, it may seem like only yesterday to them, and that's what motivates us. McGrory had always denied being Jacqueline's killer. Martin Brunt, Sky News, North London.